So good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again. We are going to talk about the absolute hypocrisy of football fans on social media, as it looks like edging closer, millimeters away, that the Qataris, Sheikh Jassim, and uh, and his uh, consortium are going to be the new owners of Manchester United, which has sent everybody into a frenzy online. Oh, well, I don't want a state owning the club. Eh, as they tweet off their iPhone. <laughs> All these humanitarians need to get in the bin. Literally get in the bin. Yeah, it is a football club, people. Yeah, the aim is to win. I don't, I don't care who owns my club as long as we win. And I'm pretty sure most Man United fans, because it is probably just a tiny little percentage of them, but they're the most loudest online. Uh, all absolutely in bits. Uh, but make sure you are smashing the um, the like button up, people. And um, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Big up to everybody who has subscribed. Appreciate it. Um, we are currently closing in on 12,500. Uh, so thanks very much. I will have some videos out on the other channel as well before I head off down to the beach. Uh, I will be recording them straight after this. Um, so there we go. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of... Um, a lot of Man United fans crying like little babies. For example, United don't need an owner who will put a ton of cash in. They just need an owner who doesn't take it out. That's one message. Uh, I could read loads of these out. I could go on forever. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though, because the absolute state of these people, yeah, it's, it's kind of hilarious watching them sit there saying, we don't want a state owning Man United. I've, that's it. I'm done with football. This is a disgrace. Yeah, football's finished. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't help when you've got journalists absolutely slandering the Qataris. You know, the fact and reality is, yeah, the the uh, the Qataris are going to come into Man United and they're going to make Man United great again. What's the issue? It's almost like these people don't want Man United to be good again because their, their little game, their facade, the little, I'm the toppest of top, 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 top reds online. Um is going to be ending, yeah, because as soon as Man United start winning again, none of these people can sit there. And listen, I hope somebody buys Arsenal at some point. Somebody like Qatari, Arab, Sheikh, somebody like that, Saudi, buys Arsenal because these people that have infested football, and it is an infestation, they're like cucaracha, cucaracha, cockroach. They're like cockroaches. Yeah, they've infested football. Yeah, and they all sit online and they all pretend that they're the best fan for their fan base, for their club. Yeah, sitting there, lording up mediocre performances, lording up mediocre players, trying to save the ownership money by tweeting out or doing videos or whatever it may be about, oh, no, it's great that this young player signs a new contract with us when the reality is there's a better player in that position in the world, go and buy them. Yeah, but they all try and save the money for the owner and they all want to sit there and play, oh, but we can't compete. We can't compete with Man City. It's a disgrace. They're cheating. Yeah, as soon as you actually get an owner in, like the Qataris, that actually absolutely blows this out of the water, their little game's finished. Yeah, they've been holding Man United back for years, these fans. Yeah, same in the Arsenal fan base. Both of these clubs are finished until an, a new owner comes in. Yes, they might nick a trophy here and there, cool. But they ain't going to go back to what, what they should be and what they should be doing until you get somebody in that actually has a set of standards that are not on the floor. Yeah, and all the Man United fans that are sitting there crying, by then, you're not wanted in football anyway. Yeah, go and support Salford. Like, make it make sense. You know, these people, I think they've got short memories as well because British Airways, in fact, I'm not even going to lie, I'm just going to read them all out. I'm going to read out all of these companies that are owned fully or partly by Qatar. Yeah, you'll be shocked at some of these. But these people... They just want to be, oh, look at me, be kind. I'm a nice person because I don't want this this, this country back in my football club. Shut up, man. What's the matter with these people? Yeah, they're absolute weirdos. Uh, but here we go. Sainsbury's, British Airways, The Shard, Barclays Bank, Heathrow Airport, Volkswagen, Porsche, Chelsea Barracks, Canary Wolf, The Ritz, Claridge's, The Savoy, The Connaught, The Berkeley, The Intercontinental Park Lane, Harrods, Royal Dutch Shell, and Film Yard Holdings, who owns Miramax, which they brought off of Disney, um, are all fully or partly owned by Qatar. Yeah, and it's absolutely hilarious. The, at the end of the day, it is a sport. Yeah, it is a sport. So the aim of the sport is to win. So go and get the person with the most money, because money 
is a massive factor in winning these days. Yeah, it's not it's not a little love story anymore about how you can rise from the bottom all the way to the top. No, you need money, mate. Yeah, so why don't you go and get somebody with money, which Man United are doing? They've gone and got the Qataris. It looks like it's all but done. Um, and they're going to rise to to glory again. And listen, fair play to Man United. I have never had any issues with Man United. Yeah, I've actually sat on this channel and my other channel saying how battered Man United is. Yeah, and, and they need to raise their standards and they need to get back to, to being good again. Because at the end of the day, I grew up on that rivalry from the George Graham era through to the Arsene Wenger era. And since then, it's died. Yeah, and both of them clubs have been an absolute disgrace for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, and any Man United fan that's sitting out there crying about the takeover is just hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's like like I said, they just want they just want to keep um keep their top red status up. Oh, I'm the best fan on the internet. Look at me. Yay, yay. I'm peddling for Marcus Rashford and Garnacho. Yay. Yeah, no, you might actually be going out and signing Mbappe's and Neymar's and players like that. Yeah, and then as soon as you start winning. Yeah, they, these fans are finished, didn't they? Because they can't sit and chat crap and lower the standards. And that is what is happening. Yeah, and it's not just at Arsenal and Man United. This is happening at a lot of football clubs because these football clubs have cottoned on to the PR side of football. So now they can peddle out everything and they know with the global fan base that both of our clubs have, yeah, they can they can manipulate because a lot of people within the Man United fan base haven't seen you in a league. Yeah, it's mad. It's actually crazy. It's actually crazy. Um, but yeah, let's read some of these out. Um, why would you make a conscious choice to support a football club whose locality, match-going fan base and wider football culture are borderline detestable to you? Because <laughs> it is a football club. Manchester United, mate, not a cult. Some of these comments are hilarious. We're, we're not getting Greenwood back in the team because we have morals, but now we're going to get a whole state that are only interested in politics. Some of these comments are mad. The majority of these people are non-match going fans as well, by the way. They're just internet warriors. The human human rights activists that sit online and don't believe half the crap they're saying. It's literally like they have no idea of reality. Yeah, They're tweeting off their iPhone, sat in their Nike trainers that they've ordered off Amazon, sipping on a Starbucks. Make it make sense. Go and Google how the how the batteries for your smartphones are, are, are found. <laughs> go, and, go and have a look at that. Yeah, yeah, they're all sitting online crying about Man United's ownership. It's hilarious. It's actually hilarious. Yeah, they're all in bits. They're all in absolute bits. And, and the funny thing is, the way these football clubs have been have been going for the last 10, 15 years, yeah, it's no surprise that they have been infested. Yeah, because the, the, the clubs have set the standards. Yeah, Arsenal ain't got any. Man United ain't got any. So now the fans, the, the proper old school fans that have seen United be good, seen Arsenal be good, they want, the, they want that back. Yeah, but the problem is them people are in the minority by a massive, massive percentage. Massive percentage. Do you think how many fans Man United and Arsenal have got and how many of them actually can go to a game? due to logistics and money, etc. Yeah, it's probably less than 1%. Less than 1%. So they don't care about the, the old school. They care about the new fan, which is why we're going out to America, both of our clubs. We went to America last year. Why are we playing, why are we playing Man United in America? Why don't we play Old Trafford? Yeah, why, why are we playing Wrexham? What's that all about? Why are we playing Wrexham? Oh, I'll tell you why, because they're the hipster's choice at the minute. Yeah, now we're going to try and get new fans over in America so we can peddle out more merch to them. Yeah, and that's all it's about with these football clubs. So I'm glad that a Qatar is coming in for United. It might get Man United back to being great again. Yeah, and I hope that happens for my club. I'm sick and tired of this PR train that is Arsenal and Man United football clubs. It is a disgrace. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, it's mad. It's mad. It's mad. And they're all sitting there crying about um about the the politics yeah they don't mind pushing out the rainbow crap though do they the rainbow mob you're happy to pedal that out aren't they and, and blm they're happy to pedal that out though aren't they yeah but then when it comes to an actual bit of standards coming into the football club 
Yeah, all of a sudden, oh, they've 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 got morals. Okay, mate. Yeah, good one. You've got morals. All of a sudden, you've got morals. Tweeting off your iPhone. Good one. Yeah, these fear these people. Yeah, are the worst type of people as well. By the way. Yeah, because they peddle all of this stuff out, virtue signaling crap. Yeah, and they don't believe any of it. It's just all to get likes on Twitter. Yeah, because they ain't got any mates. They that is their mates on Twitter. The online is their friends. They ain't got any friends. They're sat online all day. It, it makes no sense to me why anybody would be crying that the Glazers are finally leaving that football club after 18 years. Like I said, the only thing I can think of is they're happy being the toppest of top, top, top reds online, trying to lower the standards so they can look like a super fan, yeah, and um, and get a bigger account. As soon as Man United start winning, they're finished. That's it. It is what it is. But listen, I could ramble on about this all day. I'm not going to. I'm going to the beach. Uh, have a wonderful day. Smash the likes up. Let me know your thoughts and feelings. Uh, are you one of these humanitarians and moral so social justice warriors uh, that is not happy about the Qatari bid? Uh, leave it in the comment section. Or are you actually on the same page as me and um, think it'd be good for football and for Man United? Let me know. Leave it all down below. Smash the like button up. Stick your um, super chats in. And uh, we're out of it, people. Later.